Hello and welcome to a presentation on Housing Environmental Hazards Outline. This is one of our Saturn Online big picture outlines where we're uh, saying that, boy, there's a whole lot of hazards and we could make a list a mile long and we could talk about each and every one and, uh, you know, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of information out there. But here's what we're asking today. Where do we start with environmental hazards? What are the most um, hazardous materials that we find in our house? How are they affecting us? Uh, why are they a big deal? And what can we do to, to mitigate these hazards? What can we do to make these hazards uh, less hazardous? So we're going to start off with this column here where we have symptoms and health problems, which are very, very common. And then we're going to relate the symptoms and health problems to uh, the housing hazards that we see, and we're going to propose some corrective actions, all very general. So we're just going to get a big outline, and we're going to be able to build on this outline as we get more knowledgeable about these hazards. So uh, our first symptoms are, are the very common symptoms of asthma, allergies, cough, bronchitis, wheeze. You know, these types of symptoms and diseases are uh, very common and they're, they're related to certain home hazards. And those hazards are dust mites. Dust mites are the leading causes of uh, allergy and asthma um, in buildings. Mold is a very significant uh, hazard, as is ETS. What does ETS stand for? Environmental tobacco smoke. And so, uh, environmental tobacco smoke is probably the most dangerous uh, short-term and long-term um, type of hazard that we can have in a building. Also, uh, wood stoves, uh, especially older wood stoves, may leak uh, quite a bit of wood smoke, which is similar to environmental tobacco smoke. Nitrogen oxide, or various types of uh, oxides of nitrogen, are irritants uh, to the respiratory system. They're related to the exacerbation of asthma and uh, to asthma uh, in sensitive people. And then also um, pets, especially cat dander, uh, have a tendency to be related to asthma, allergies, cough, bronchitis, those types of things. So what do we do for corrective action? One of the most important things we can do is moisture control because moisture control will take out dust mites and mold. Then we've got to ban smoking indoors. That'll take care of the environmental tobacco smoke and some of this these oxides of nitrogen. Then we gotta make sure our combustion processes are safe. We don't wanna be using unvented space heaters, ventless fireplaces. Uh, they're uh, hazardous, we wanna stay away from them. So we wanna use safe combustion and we wanna do tests on our combustion venting systems to make sure that the products of combustion are being vented to the outdoors. So next, we have a whole uh, bunch of poisoning that, that are related to chemicals that you know, we've invented in the past 50 years. And uh, we've got poisoning from things like lead and acetone and benzene. Things like that are actually poisons. They affect uh, our health right away. Um, carbon monoxide. So. Symptoms of poisoning are lethargy and hypersensitivity, which means that, I mean, you used to be able to, um, you know, be around people who were wearing perfume and deodorant, and, and now you can't be around them anymore because you're too sensitive. Uh, it, it means you were probably poisoned by some chemical, uh, flu-like symptoms, nervous disorders, irritated eyes uh, are all kind of a, um, the signs of poisoning. Okay, and what's going to poison you? Well, it's going to be volatile organic compounds like formaldehyde. 
uh, which are found in many, many different materials. They're found in drywall, uh, carpet, uh, you know, vinyl floor cover coverings, and glues, and resins, and paints used in, in homes. There, anytime you remodel a home, you're going to be seeing a lot more uh, volatile organic compounds inside your house, and that's the time when you may get sick. So you want to do your remodeling in the spring and summertime when you can ventilate and get a, get a lot of those VOCs out of the house. And we've got pesticides. Not only pesticides that we may currently be using uh, to um, smite different insects like wasps and roaches and things like that, but pesticide residues uh, can last a long time. So even people who lived in the house before you may have had a lot of pesticides. And uh, they, they generally have kind of an acrid odor. And we want to keep these out of the reach of children. Poisoning is one of the biggest you know, accidental causes of death in the home. I think it's uh, actually number two. <laughs> we got falls and we got poisoning. So uh, with all these things, we have to you know, remove them. Uh, we have to avoid them, avoid using them. If we don't really need to use these pesticides, if we can you know, put up with uh, a, a few insects or if we can use them less, uh, we can avoid this poisoning. We, uh, we want to remove them, uh, kind of move them out of the house, move them to a detached garage or a, or a shed or something like that where we're not living. Um, for carbon monoxide, which is a poison related to the combustion process, it's related to environmental tobacco smoke, uh, you know, wood stoves, unvented space heaters, vented space heaters. We've got to be testing for carbon monoxide in, in, in the home. It's also, uh, we can be poisoned by carbon monoxide from uh, automobiles in attached, in attached garages. The carbon monoxide leaks into the house. Very, very common. All these poisoning things. Uh, you know, I'm not being a fear monger here. Uh, these are very common ways that people get poisoned, very common ways that uh, people, uh, people's health is profoundly impacted by poisons. Lead dust is the leading uh, cause of environmental illness in children, and lead dust poisons children. So avoidance, removal, testing, mitigation, containment, and cleaning are important in all these things, especially with the lead dust, we get into containment and cleaning, especially when we do a remodeling project. We're creating a lot of dust. There can be lead in the dust. Children can be gravely affected by that. Okay, we've got all these things, all these respiratory diseases. We've got all these hypersensitivity, flu symptoms, nervous disorders related to different types of chemicals in the building. Okay, unintended injuries very important uh, cause of uh, physical harm to people in their homes. On unintended injuries, the most common unintended injury is falls. So just the awareness of how we injure ourselves is one of the leading ways that we can avoid injury. Just being aware that when we climb up on something or when we walk through a cluttered hallway, uh, that we are risking life and limb because uh, the leading cause of death and injury in homes is falls. And then fires and burns and scalding. But all, this is also, this unintended injury also relates to this poisoning here. Because poisoning is the second leading cause of injury and death in the home. Uh, uh, unintended injury. That falls under both of these categories here. So uh, falls, fires and burns, scalding. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure our stairs are safe, that they're in good repair. Um, we want to make sure that our handrails are uh, fastened, that all, every set of stairs has a handrail. We want to remove clutter from hallways and walkways, stair, from stairs. We should be very careful climbing. You know, if we find ourselves having to climb over and over again and we're stepping on some weak chair or stool or something like that, maybe it's time to get a small stepladder that uh, is safer to use. 
Just remember, whenever you climb up off the ground, wherever your feet are off the ground, you are in grave danger. Uh, then for fires, we need smoke alarms. The single most important thing to prevent death and injuries from fires is smoke alarms. Then for scalding, we need to just control our water temperature. 120 degrees for a water temperature is usually warm enough. You can measure that in the closest tap to the water heater. Okay, now we have something that's less of a concern, but still a concern, cancer. I mean, it takes a long time to develop. You know, all of these things are very immediate. Uh, but cancer is also important, and we do have some uh, important carcinogens in, in our buildings. First one, environmental tobacco smoke. And I think there's, it's something like 60% you know, of all people in the United States, if you test their blood, you'll find traces of environmental tobacco smoke. Uh, radon is one of the uh, leading causes of lung cancer just after tobacco smoke. And asbestos uh, containing materials are common in homes and an asbestos is a known carcinogen. Actually, uh, also these VOCs are also carcinogens. To, to mitigate uh, environmental tobacco smoke, radon, asbestos, um, what we want to do is of course, again, ban smoking indoors. For radon, we need to test and, if necessary, mitigate. Uh, different parts of the country have different radon threats, and even uh, in, in neighborhoods, you know, one house may have a much greater threat of radon than other houses. It has to do with the nature of the soil underneath the house. If there's a lot of fractured rock, there may be a lot of uh, radon coming up through the soil. Uh, we need to test and mitigate. Um, yes, it takes 30 years to, to develop, but uh, we don't want children living in homes that are filled with radon. Um, ventilation is also important here to avoid cancer. We put cancer last because cancer takes years, you know, decades really to develop. So it's not so much of a concern as, as, the, as these. Asthma has become a, a tremendous childhood disease and many, many people suffer from asthma and allergies, bronchitis, uh, you know, this poisoning and hypersensitivity has become frighteningly common. So we've got to recognize these, these hazards and the, the recognizing them and being aware of them uh, is the first step toward avoiding hazards in your home.